Hej, Ljungfla. Hvad er det? Hvad er det? Fint. Det er godt at have i Dublin. Det er godt at være her. Tyg. Hvad er det nu? You were missed at Pauline's christening last Sunday. <laughs> couldn't make it, couldn't make it, I'm sorry. Well, they were very disappointed. They went up to the Shamrock afterwards, got food. Margaret from the Shamrock says, where's Tyg? Where's the bucket? <laughs> you weren't there. She had to throw out 4,000 cocktail sausages. <laughs> <laughs> and five pounds of salt. <laughs> I ate as many as I could. I ate as many as I could. And them sausages, they're more salt on them than the Indian Ocean. <laughs> I swear, I was walking home and I thought, if I fall into the river, I'll probably float. <laughs> Saved by the buoyancy of sausages from the shamrock. Oh, Jesus. How's the father? Keep him well now, yeah. Mm, he not answering my phone calls. <laughs> he doesn't have a mobile phone. What? <laughs> the house phone? Yeah, he not answering. <laughs> Disconnect that. <laughs> you know why he not answering my calls? Well. He owes me a fiver. <laughs> It's back. He don't want to pay it back. But he owed me a fiver. And I remember it because um, he won Best Cooking Apples at the 1998 Banjo Show. And them apples were leaning over. <laughs> into my, they were my apples, technically. And it was a five pound prize that day. And I hate to say it about my own family, but he took the money and he skipped town. <laughs> he took the prize money, okay? Now, I'm willing to forgive, forget, Skip between furlongs. I'm willing to let it go, if you can hand over the fiver now. <laughs> <laughs> and I also want to say thanks to Arnia for the biscuits. And the slice of tart that I just ate will not be deducted from the five euro. <laughs> Do you think we could come to some sort of arrangement between family now? Was that five punt or <laughs> five, five euro? Five, five punt. It was five punt at the time. Any idea what that is in modern money? No, no. We'll just go with five euro. <laughs> okay, fair enough. One for one, man for man. I think we can start it out after the podcast. We might be able to come to some resolution. Some, some sort of an arrangement. <laughs> okay, look, I'm going to drive on. Uh, we can talk later. And um, I want to get straight into the news, okay? This week, we're going to Russia. Now, I never forgive them for what they did to you two. I was telling you about that last week. But uh, the big news out of Russia this week, uh, they're no crack. But apart from that, there's a priest in Russia, and he have a wife. That's a fact. Okay. Okay? And she's fucking tasty. <laughs> Could be the biscuit. Oh, she put a horn on Bosco. <laughs> Do you remember the television show? <laughs> the little lad in the box. I know. Man. Hello, everybody. <laughs> remember, remember that fella? Okay. Now, she's fucking lovely. She is a lovely woman. And she won a competition called Miss Sensuality at a beauty pageant last week, right? Now, I don't know what you have to do to win Miss Sensuality, but I didn't see her bake any scones. <laughs> <laughs> so, she's a fine woman. And I tell you, she had that kind of a glint in her eye. Do you know? You could dip your chips in her. Oh, <laughs> fuck. She's that kind of a woman now, right? Now, the church in Russia are going so mad over this. They're saying the arch priest, must be like the Russian kind of archbishop job, Feodor Saprikin, and he is chair of the diocesan church at the court there, and he declared that it is a great sin. When the wife of a priest exposes herself for sure. Whoa. And I know, I know where he's coming from. But, you know, some things are between a man and his wife. Yeah. Okay. But he probably said that thinking that the priest's wife wouldn't be hectic. But he haven't seen the priest's wife, who's a flaking woman. This could turn out to be the greatest recruitment drive from the church. You know, if people thought that's what a priest's wife looked like. They'd, they'd all be joining. Yeah. It'd be the best drive since, do you remember when the collar used to get you into the cinema free? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was that a big one, yeah? That was a big one. Lord last giant for the free cinema. Back in the day. Do you remember there was a priest in our town, Father Cullum, and he went to the cinema three times a week. And he the same film would be on. And he'd be up, and he'd be down the back, he'd be shouting what was going to happen next. <laughs> And he was claiming it was God told him. And the fucking whore, he'd have whiskey coming out of his ears. 
But um, he got barred from the cinema for a finish. Well, what do you, what do you do? For, for fucking roaring. Okay. But he's mad into the films. Yes. Yeah, he left priesthood in the end. He actually went on to direct Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how things work out. But, um, <laughs> but this lady, like, I, I nearly joined the priesthood myself. <laughs> if I thought this is the kind of woman you get, only if I don't like wine. <laughs> or praying but um, so the priest in question have it here his name is Father Sergei Zatov and he's head priest of a cathedral in the city of Magnetogorsk which is of course famous for its underage camogie structure <laughs> but as the old saying goes Magnetogorsk they never do it at senior <laughs> As the old saying goes, right. So that's a fact. But this priest has been sent away from the city to work in a little village in the middle of nowhere. That's his punishment for the wife entering the beauty pageant. Okay. And the bishop said, what kind of a priest is he if he cannot control his own family? So the bishop said, now I'm still struggling with the priest having a family. (laughs) To be honest, this is a new thing on me. So the Russian Orthodox Church is like separate to the church that we have. You know, it's like you had the wolf tones and then Derek Warfield kind of went his own way. <laughs> He's still going, but like it's not the same. Not the same, yeah. So, Orthodox priests can marry and yeah, you have to look, look after your family. As my father would say, don't boil the kettle unless you're going to drink the tea. <laughs> Do you get me? Do you know? But um, I actually, I had four uncles who became priests. Go ahead. Yeah. And, and they were all over the place. So my uncle, Father Declan, he was in the missions in Sudan, in Africa. And he, he had a tough job. He was trying to convert locals away from human sacrifices and witch doctrine, paganism. He was trying to get him to Christianity. And, no, sorry, he was in Longford. It <laughs> <laughs> was Father Senin who was in Sudan. All right. Yeah, he said it was lovely. <laughs> It was very warm. <laughs> and they all spoke African. <laughs> I couldn't get over it. I couldn't believe it. They were all fucking walking around speaking African. Um, so the priest's wife, they said, if she repents, they might let him come back to the city. But I think she should be allowed to do whatever she wants. It's true. You know? Um, like, as long as the dinner's on the table and the home fire is burning. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The old... Yep. Sex. <laughs> <laughs> but that's Russia okay and um, there was photos of the priest's wife on, on Google okay but they're gone right yeah uh, there was bikini photos of her and they're gone now and I know that because I spent six hours looking for them <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> our second story we're off to the Horn of Africa and it's not a pornography tape in our dirty video you get off the video man do you remember the video man yeah would yeah. you have a video man going on you could rent another video off me and call around to the house yeah do you have another video man down your way oh no, never you never had a video man you used to have lads going around vans selling, <laughs> selling pirates yeah. selling pirates that's <laughs> what I did like pirate tapes but never had a rental man we'd we had extra vision in Ross, we were looking up like, I don't Jeez, know what, don't modern know what like, or modern I don't know though. what it's like around Tipperary, it must be shook enough though. Didn't you, even have blockbusters, did you? Like? No, never had blockbuster like. I had a blockbuster, a six pound hammer. <laughs> <laughs> That's close I got to the blockbuster, but our video man was called Paddy Skin. Because he used to say, how are you skin? That's what he'd say, Paddy Skin the video man. And if you gave Paddy Skin the nod, he'd give you the dirty video. But the code word was Choom. Right? Choom. <laughs> yeah. But it got very confusing when the Saw Doctors released the live video. So, I wish I was on that. We got the fucking N69. We got... <laughs> and the Cormac's birthday party was quite the education <laughs> for a couple of young lads. That's a fucking fact. But, uh, the Horn of Africa <laughs> has a place called Somalia. Okay? It's a bit of a kip. Smiley, it's gone very rough. Um, there's a load of lads there called Al Shabab. Did you ever hear them? 
No. They're not the pirates, are they? They're boarding all the cruise liners. Some of them are pirates. <laughs> he knows yeah. about the cruises. <laughs> Ty knows about the cruises. There's another rabbit hole I went down. <laughs> Al Shabab, oh, just don't go near them boys. They are rough, I'll tell you. <laughs> the cruise liner. Yeah. Oh, woeful trouble, as you get the water hose and everything they after. They're worse than the rover's coat. <laughs> Al Shabab. <laughs> yeah. So they oh, have um, Al Shabab in. It's Arabic, right? But it actually translates to the guys. That's a fact. The lads. But they're actually shit crack, these <laughs> lads now. Do you ever hear the word Mujahideen? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like a youth movement. Now, it kind of sounds like a Chinese takeaway or something, Mujahideen, but it's not. Uh, it's like the, the kind of ISIS version of Makra. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, not much crack. So, the, and long story short, Somali is fucked. Okay. <laughs> the bomb's going off the whole time. And I just want to take a moment, because as a man, he's after setting up a free ambulance. Fair play. Yeah. Uh, his name is Abdul Qadir Abdahar Am Adam. The man to call when you're in a hurry. <laughs> so, they like they say, don't call 999. Call Abdul <laughs> Qadir Abdahar Am Adam. <laughs> It rolls off the door. Oh, Chase to be handy or die. <laughs> 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 oh, fucking handy or die. He was in, in Pakistan and he was studying dentistry, dentistry, which is the study of trout. And then he came home. <laughs> I don't think it is. Um, but the, amb- the ambulance, to get an ambulance in Somalia is big money. Very big money. So he uh, he said, well, lads, come to the hospital in fucking wheelbarrows the whole lot. It was like Tullamore, he said. Um, <laughs> so he's uh, just getting everyone to donate. Okay. To a dollar a month or whatever. All, all his, his teachings, all his students and a um, dollar a month. Because uh, if you don't have your health, as my neighbour at home, Tim Fleming, used to say, if you haven't your health, you've nothing. <laughs> Which was easy for him to say. <laughs> Because he had not. <laughs> <laughs> Even Paddy Skin, Paddy Skin wouldn't call into him. <laughs> uh, but the ambulance is the only job. We know care, Doc. Well, this is years ago now, Dr. Coffey. Um, and what he knew about doctoring, he must have learned it off the birds, I'd say. <laughs> now, honest to God. He knew, you know what I mean? He was about as much use as a son holiday in Anna Carty. <laughs> kind of job, right? Because he rang a neighbour of ours one time. And he said, I have your test results. You have... 24 hours to live also I meant to ring you yesterday (laughs) (laughs) so that is um, the ambulances in Somalia Uh, and just Al-Shabaab their gas their crest actually looks like a shit hurling club yeah yeah I'll show you the Al-Shabaab crest instead of hurlings it has two M16s and a book yeah I don't know what book it is now but anyway but um just on uh, local things, I want to remind you of when Tig used to be calling up to us when he was by. Did you know that the Tig actually won? He would have came second in strongest man in the town. Yeah. What you? And he actually you haven't been back since Tig. <laughs> I'm wondering just because Chunky Hayes got the better, you know. <laughs> you haven't been back since. See, Tig won the hog toss. That's when you, ha- you have to catch a pig. And you throw the pig over the roof of the Shamrock Lounge. <laughs> and then Huey throws you out with his ostrich. <laughs> kind of like Elton John says, circle life. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you were very lucky. Got that there. You were very um, unlucky in um, the priest hop, which is, of course, the second round. Where you had to run to the old bridge and back with a priest on your back. <laughs> Um, and Tiger, of course, got the short straw when he pulled out the name of Fander Hackett. Man's as big as a bull. <laughs> and fuck it, Tiger, you were going well. I remember it well now. Yourself and Chunky were neck and neck. Until, and Fander Hackett up in your back smoking fags. Do you remember, sure? Yeah, you're only young for the time, but. <laughs> fuck it, you'd have won it too if you hadn't fallen into Carey's bog. But um, <laughs> then there was the Donkey Derby. And fuck it, for a finish, Donkey was up in Tiger's back. <laughs> <laughs> Ty, Ty was so strong, he was kind of donkey. It's fucking quicker. I'll never forget about you, some strength. <laughs> but um, you haven't been around in a while, so I just wanted to ask you a little a little mini quiz on the furlongs. Okay, go for it, let's go. This is um, what about, I know your furlong. <laughs> um, 
So in the 2004 edition of Queen of the Fair, which of the furlongs was accidentally crowned winner in the all-female event? Was it A, Eddie the Ferret, furlong? Was it B, Johnny Two-Stroke, furlong? Or C, Conal the Barbarian, furlong? B, Johnny Two-Stroke. It wasn't, unfortunately, <laughs> it was Conal the Barbarian. Is he not a dog, no? No, uh, Conal not a dog? The dog is named after him. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the dog is more recent. You probably don't remember your, your Uncle Conal, but he was... Um, God rest him. God, God rest him. God be good, yeah. No, he's not dead. He just moved to Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> but with his long hair, he was the closest thing to a good-looking woman in the hall that night. And also, we bribed the MC for the crack. Okay, one more quick one before I go. Where did Uncle Frank go on his holidays this year? Was it A, Houston Station? Was it B, Barack Obama Plaza? <laughs> or C, the car boot sale in Feathered? He went to the Barack Obama Plaza. Wasn't he it? did. The Supermax, the Tolo <laughs> yeah. Tank Burger. That's right. He the went to the Tolo got... Tank Burger in the Supermax. And, uh, Bra- I remember you telling me the story. Yeah. yeah. He fucking he loved it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got he was up and down. Taco the, chip and Supermax said it was unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've never tasted them myself, believe it or not. But it's supposed to be unbelievable. Stuff. Oh, and Frank is still going on about it. Yeah, <laughs> I was only caught over there a day. Actually, we're still talking about. It. Yeah, was he? He was still licking his beard. Yeah, trying to get the last morsels out. Of. <sighs> but he he only had the free travel. Yeah, he had uh, the pass now, sir. Yeah, yeah, sure. He yeah, was yeah. he was up and down the day and all. Yeah, not bad at all. Sure. Oh, best holiday ever went yeah. on. But um, <laughs> but he is he loves our travel. And he said he's hoping to get to Houston Station before he dies. So, <laughs> go on, I must go. I'm going to meet Johnny Two Stroke in town for a pint. So, we might see you later. Be good. Good man, young for the sound. 